Hong Kong is known for having one of the most efficient public transport systems in the world. The city's rail network, the MTR, is also known for being one of the most colourful. The MTR has 99 stations, each with its own unique colour scheme. So why is the MTR so colourful and how is each colour scheme chosen? I think MTR reflects Hong Kong. It's the lifeblood of Hong Kong um, and it's been moving people around for 40 years. Um, so when you look at, say, what our heritage is, it's mosaic, the bold use of colour, and the use of calligraphy, which I think makes it uniquely Hong Kong. The MTR was designed by British Italian architect Roland Paletti in the 1970s. He introduced the use of colourful mosaic tiles and large calligraphy to give the new network some personality. When the MTR was first launched, the varying colours were used to help illiterate commuters identify the different stations. Different shades of red were used to signify key stations on the network, such as Mong Kok and Central. The red shades were used to alert passengers that they had arrived at a major interchange or terminus. Some station colours were influenced by the surrounding environment. For example, Ho Man Tin Station is green because it was built into the side of a hill. Others were inspired by the station name. Architects often actually look at the Chinese name for the stations and then link it using the colours. So in this case, Choi Hong actually means rainbow in Cantonese. While yellow is the colour of Wong Tai Sin Station because the word Wong means yellow. But architects got even more creative with other stations. The colour scheme in Diamond Hill is based around black, but they do use lighter tiles such as white and these reflective tiles to give the glint of a diamond. Prince Edward Station is purple, a colour commonly associated with royalty. But a handful of stations break with tradition. Stops along the Airport Express line are a unique shade of Foster Grey, named after Norman Foster, the famed architect behind the Hong Kong International Airport. Carefully designed colour palettes, calligraphy and artwork not only give each station its own identity, they also help to orient passengers as they navigate the underground tunnel system. Nowadays, new or renovated MTR stations employ a mix of materials and colours, rather than the monochromatic mosaic approach used in the 1970s. You know, it's very hard to get 99 unique identifiable colours. So you do have a number of yellow stations, a number of blue stations, a number of red stations. And what we're trying to do with the modern stations now is add in accent colours so that they become more identifiable. The MTR is also one of the largest commissioners of public art in the city. Each large-scale installation has a unique connection to the surrounding district. We hire artists to do site-specific works. This work you can't take and put into any other station because it is literally the wall holding back Victoria Harbour. And if you moved it to Admiralty or you moved it to Central, that, that logic behind it doesn't work. Similarly with the new work by Tally Fisher, the one the sculptor hangs over the uh, atrium, it's a celebration of the four lines coming together. Each one of those arms is painted in the unique colours of the four lines. The challenge as us, as the architects of the, the new railway, is how to respect that heritage and yet update it and bring it up to date with the new stations. As the MTR looks to the future, its architects are committed to maintaining the unique heritage of the railway.